What's going on, guys? So Mo S wants to know, is Krav Maga an effective mixed martial art? I intend to answer this question right now. All right, so is Krav Maga an effective uh, fighting system? You know, obviously, you guys know I bash freaking Krav Maga quite a bit on this channel. The reason that I bash freaking Krav Maga quite a bit on this channel is not because it's an ineffective fighting art. Obviously, we know that the IDF uh, uses this system quite effectively. Um, you know, how many times has it been used in actual hand-to-hand -hand fighting? Actually, it's been used a bit. Um, you guys, some of you know that I've done quite a bit of training in the Israeli defense systems, the Israeli shooting systems, a little bit of Israeli CQB. I've Obviously, I'm a Krav Maga level one certified instructor by KMG Global. I'm aware of this system um, fairly intimately. You know, I've really I've studied it in the West Bank in Israel. I've studied it at um, a counterterrorism Israeli counterterrorism academy in San Diego. That's I don't think any longer there. I've done a lot of work with Krav Maga since I was younger. I speak on this system as somebody who has studied it, okay? And I'm not going to be talking out of the side of my neck here, like I do with some systems. When somebody asks me, hey, Will, what do you think about this? And I've never studied it. I'll Google it. What do you want? Anyway, before I was interrupted there by an important phone call, I was saying that uh, I'm going to talk about this system kind of with more knowledge-based um, here than, than not, right? So what is my view? And I've been very vocal about this is that in America specifically, but also to some degree in Europe, uh, the Krav Maga that we're being taught here is not being taught the same way as it's taught in Israel. Again, I studied it in Israel. I watched Israeli security forces go through their training, their actual training in Krav Maga at one of the facilities that I was at at the West Bank when I was doing some bodyguarding training. All right. It was hard. It was like fairly brutal. It was hands-on. It was, hey, let's go sprint, 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 and then run into a very hot, <laughs> middle of the summer, hot room with no air conditioning, and then fight each other. Yeah, they had like, you know, flak jackets and some helmets and stuff on, right? But they were legit like fighting each other, throwing each other, punching each other, kicking each other. Like, you know, not obviously like in the balls, but they, and I believe they actually had cups on too, which is like how you should train. They were really doing it, right? And they were fighting with rifles and all of that. It was hard. And I participated in some of it, not all of it, but some of it. And it was hard, all right? I actually got my shoulder. I, it wasn't hurt. It was just tweaked uh, in the process of that training. So I have a lot of respect for that. And it, it seemed a lot like Wolf's Combatives. You guys know I've been through several week-long courses with uh, Bill Wolf, Wolf Combatives, World War II-based combative training type stuff. Very, very hard training. Very, very effective stuff. And this is very much what that was like. And over there, their training, obviously, with their lives depend on it, right? I'll tell you firsthand, I've been to Jerusalem a few times now in the Arab quarter and the Jewish quarters and even in the Armenian quarters. They're very narrow streets and people come and they will attack the, the Jews with knives, all right, or the Israelis, I should say, with knives. Um, and they need this Krav Maga stuff like to stay alive. Like it's it's not really like an exaggeration to say that these Israeli citizens do need Krav, and it does, it can and does work, okay? But it depends on the training methodology that you're using, just like everything else, right? And one thing that I really love about mixed martial arts is it's hard training. When you go into jujitsu, you're fighting, you're sparring, you're throwing each other, all of that. You're drilling, yes, but then you actually go ahead and do it as well, and you see, and you pressure test it, and you see what, what works. Muay Thai, yes, as well, pressure tested. Judo, pressure tested wrestling very much pressure tested and boxing as well and there are some other arts that are like that whereas here in the states and i'm going to specifically speak about the states because i haven't studied krav over in europe in the states there is very little pressure testing done period even to get your black belt in krav maga very very little pressure testing is done is there some yes uh, even when i got my instructor certification in the system uh, it was a two week long course. We pressure tested it once, once. Okay. But it wasn't even Krav. 
We put on the sparring gear. We put on boxing gloves. And you know what it turned into? An MMA fight. It really did. And it wasn't even that hard. And that was during the peak of my MMA training. But at the same point, it was like, now we're just boxing and doing a little Muay Thai. It's not really Krav anymore, right? So here in the States, a lot of the times it's about money. And there is very little money to be made in the martial arts world. Whether you teach it, whether you sell instructional um, videos like I do, whether you run a school. Now, unless you're running like a very professional MMA or jiu-jitsu type school, there is very little money to be made. So people get very greedy and people will do what they have to do to make those shekels, right? So Krav Studios are no different. They'll have kids courses sometimes and stuff. And that's a lot of the time how money is actually made in the martial arts, you know, teaching uh, community or teaching realm, right? But more so, they're just going to promote you because of time spent. It, it's really bad and it's really counterproductive because a lot of people really go to these Krav Maga studios because they think, I really want to learn, shut up. I really want to learn how to, to defend myself on the streets. Like if I'm attacked by... Uh, a, or an attacker, like I want to be able to fight back and, and live. And a lot of women, you know, get trapped in this, this, it's a bad, it's a bad thing. It's a trap, right? Because you go to this and what they've got you doing a lot of the times is kicking pads, hitting pads. Now pad work is essential for part of your martial arts training. But if you only hit pads, you never know how it feels to be hit back. If you only cooperatively drill you never know how it feels to actually fight somebody. And let me tell you this, and I tell you this a thousand percent from personal real world experience, real street fights are nothing like cooperative drilling. They happen fast. They're very quick. They're very intimidating. There's a lot of adrenaline that goes on. And it's just very, very much not anything like cooperative drilling and pad work. So unless you're legitimately pressure testing this, and in my personal opinion, unless you're getting injuries, sustaining injuries, like when you pressure test your stuff every now and again, you don't need to get injuries every time. But unless you're running the risk, at least, of becoming injured, you're not pressure testing it. Because in a fight, the whole, the whole concept is to injure your opponent, if not to end their life, right? Um, and especially with something like Krav Maga, which is a battlefield system, you need to be doing that. But they're not. You will see over and over again, and I, I made a recent video where I alluded to this, and I I won't put it up on I won't put any clips of this because it's it, this is this guy's business. He's got his logo all over the place. There's one black belt test for Krav Maga that you can find on YouTube where it's like these people that should not be having their black belts because they don't. Some of them clearly don't know how to fight, and in my opinion, if you are getting a black belt, you should be proficient in the art. And part of the art of Krav Maga is, is actually fighting. You know, it's it. Now, let's move on from that. And I, I can bash Krav, American Krav, all day long, right? People who run it are greedy. They want to take your money. They're going to give you a false sense of security, which is really a fucking problem for me. It's really like I really, really, really have a big problem with this because it, it runs the risk of getting somebody killed. And you don't want that on your conscience, like as an instructor, right? Whenever I show you guys things, uh, you know, even on this YouTube channel, but specifically in my uh, paid programs, I'm never going to show you some bullshit thing. I'll either show you something that I personally, you know, used in pressure testing or in sparring or on the streets. And I won't show you like speculative type deals, right? So, or, you know, or things like the Fairburn stuff that have been proven time and time again in real world engagements. Whereas like, Krav Maga, it's not that the techniques aren't 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 sound, um, but they don't ever show you, they don't ever really talk too, too much in most Krav schools. And I know that there's some out there that are very good, but in most Krav schools, like they'll teach you for grappling, right? The UPA bridge and roll, the UPA bridge and roll. And, you know, that's where you, you know, you're, you're on the ground, on your back, full mount. And this is like the typical, like, reality-based self-defense way of escaping a full mount. Well, in reality, it's almost impossible to get it to work. Even when you're not getting hit, just in jujitsu grappling, it's very hard to get this to work. And it's even harder to get this to work if the person weighs more than you. Near impossible, honestly. So, you know, I can, I've been doing jujitsu for five, five years now almost, and I can probably count on one hand, maybe two, 
the times that I've actually gotten an Uber Bridge role to like legitimately work kind of textbook style, right? Most of the times I'm going to push to half guard and go from there, something, excuse me, something else. But like, they'll show you this and then they'll kind of make you lead you, lead you to believe that you have this down. And like, if you were actually on your back and a grown man was on top of you, wailing on you that you could like make this work. Um, No, I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way. And so for them to like do this to you and teach you this and have you only cooperatively drill it and never actually put it to the test, like most schools do, I'm not saying all, but most schools do this. It's not right because when you do find yourself in that situation and you're only like half really there mentally because you've just got thrown on your back, you probably have hit your head, you, you know, you're getting hit in the head. It's an extremely stressful situation. Well, let me tell you this. The only thing that you're really going to be able to do is grab him up and pull him into you, right? And it's probably the best thing that you can do anyway. But it's, you know, it, it's not it's not as easy as it looks. And I, I need people to be reiterating that to their students that, look, we're going to put the gloves on. We're going to go half speed here, but I'm not going to let you bump me off. I'm not going to let you do it. And then we'll see what happens, you know, and then maybe we can make it simpler. Like the way that we teach it, the way that we teach when you're under a full mount is very simple. It doesn't really have to do much with the Uber bridge and roll. It's more about attacking the groin. You know, it's more about pulling him in close and utilizing biting and things like that. It's more about old Fairburn techniques, eye gouging, things like that combined with some simple grappling techniques. Okay. This is my problem though with, with with Krav. And then you've got like the very stereotypical like groin kick, right? Hacha. And you they got you doing like a million of these. Groin kicks work. They work when they work when the person doesn't know you're gonna throw it, you know. And then I don't know, there's a lot of techniques that they utilize, and I could go on about this forever. Um there's another thing that really angers me about it, which is the running away part. They'll have you do a series of techniques. And then your partner will cooperatively fall to the ground and they'll have you turn your back and run away. Now, number one, you guys know, I think running away is a cowardly type thing. Is there a time and a place? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Do we want to drill it into us? Mm, the argument goes that for civilians, they probably should drill it in, you know, running away from the problem. But what happens if you're not familiar with the area? And you're running actually into a more dangerous situation. You know, a lot of the times when you're attacked, you're not, the person's not alone, right? So like what happens from just automatically ingraining that into you to turn your back and run the other way? Well, like what if there's more enemies over there? Like it, it just doesn't make much sense, you know, to like back away maybe would be a good idea um, to put your, your back up against a, a wall. Or something solid would probably be a good idea. Like I know in Bill Wolf's system, we do a lot of check, check. We look over our shoulder, right? And that comes from that old tactical shooting methodology. Bang, bang, bang. I've acquired, I've hit my target. All right, before I holster, let me bring it in that, that sewer position and look over my shoulder to make sure there's no one behind me. Like that is solid methodology in my personal opinion. But to just simply blindly turn and run, I just don't think tactically it's always the most sound decision situationally situation will dictate right so to always kind of train that just doesn't seem smart to me but hey what do i know i'm no you know i'm no i'm no genius right but it just from all that i've experienced and i've been through a lot of training guys like i'm very well trained in this stuff it doesn't seem tactically sound to me to do that all the time that's my other problem but you know it's <sighs> You see a lot of Krav Maga videos out there, and it looks flashy. It looks cool. But I always say, watch the Uki, okay? Watch the Uki. For you for you guys who don't know what the Uki is, it's the guy who's getting the techniques done on them. And a lot of the times, like, they, they have it in their head, like, I'm going to let this guy, you know, throw some air punches on me or whatever. And then at the end, I'll go, oh, and I'll fall down. But, you know, it, if you just simply were to put on a cup, put on some pads, and then do that, it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't. Like a lot of the times you'd be surprised, you know, in a fight, like what you think is going to do a lot of damage really doesn't. And then sometimes you get surprised and you think, well, that shouldn't do any damage, but it fucked him up. It, it's a, it's a, it's a grab bag really, but to always train that way. And we at gutter fighting secrets at modern gutter fighting, the way we train you, the way we teach you, like if you ever come and do private lessons with me, 
which is an option. Go to FightingSecrets.com is the website. But if you ever do that, like sometimes your Uki is going to like, okay, you know, you got it. Very good. Now take your, take your after, after actions. Right. But other times we're not going to let you get it. And we're going to slowly keep coming at you. And we're going to see how you react from there to see, well, okay, my one, two, three, four shots didn't didn't really have the desired outcome. Like I hit him in the groin with a groin kick. I punched him in the face. I grabbed him up and threw an elbow. And then I threw another knee. Um, but for whatever reason, that didn't take him out. He actually just grabbed my leg now. Um, I have to do something now, right? So that's the way that we like to train guys. Sometimes you get it. Sometimes you don't. You don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to be realistic about it. And a lot of times in craft schools, they don't. They're not realistic about it. It's I threw an elbow and the Uki goes, oh, and it goes on the ground. Well, that's not really, that's not training you right. That's not training you right at all. Um, and it's not training you right because a lot of the times, like I said, like in a battlefield or in a street situation, maybe you do, maybe you get him real good with an elbow. And he's just a tough fucking son of a bitch. Like <laughs> the gym I train at now where I live, most of the guys that you run into or UFC fighters. And I, I was in the sauna with one of these guys, actually two of these guys last night. And I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, bro, you don't give a fuck. And uh, it just became apparent to me that like from his demeanor and everything, I probably wouldn't be able to beat him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it's like, I'm not taking that personal. Like there's just some guys that are too tough. There's some guys that are tougher than you. But like, do you really want to fall back if you run into a guy like that? And chances are, if a guy attacks you, like, and you're not doing anything, and a guy just like comes up and attacks you, he's either a crazy, b on drugs, or c a fucking psycho son of a bitch like this, right? So like, do you really want to? Do you really want to rely on the fact that like you've been to Krav Maga and when you throw an elbow, your uki goes Ugh, and falls over, or or do you want to at least know that you've got some options to fall back on? Do you want to know that when that doesn't work, what do I do next? Instead of being surprised like a deer in a freaking headlights when you crack someone real good on the jaw and he eats it. And, you know, a lot of these Krav students would be like, uh, 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 and then boom, they're done, right? They get the double egged or whatever. Like they get, they get hit with a barrage of punches. Or do you want to know that like, okay, that didn't work. Let me transition to this. Let me kind of underhook, you know, blah, 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 right? And and we always believe in giving our students like option A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. And then the idea is to get you to a place where you don't think about this. You don't think about the transition of transitionary periods. You don't think about it's one technique flows into the other, flows into the other, flows into the other, flows into the other. And you don't need to think it's automatic. And that only comes from a long time of doing it or an instructor that can show you how to flow from his long time of doing it. And a lot of people, whilst they may say, or they may claim that they've been in a lot of, you know, whatever altercations, like a lot of people haven't, a lot of people have trained Krav Maga. A lot of people have done, you know, certain arts, right? Whether it's Krav, whether it's, I don't know, name your whatever reality-based martial arts, because I don't want to say them, but, um, not a lot of people have had that practical hands-on experience. And even a lot of these Krav coaches, like some of them are very good fighters and some of them are not. Some of them, like one of the instructors that I went through my <laughs> certification process with, it was very clear to me that this, he was, this was a business for him. And, um, and I'll leave my my ego out of this, but a number of the other students there getting their certification would be able to manhandle him in an actual fight. He knew the techniques. He knew how to tell you, okay, this is a submachine gun disarm. You do it like this, then you do it like this, then you do it like this, then you do it like this. Very mechanical, right? But like what happens, what happens when you're doing it like this and you get headbutted in the head and, and your opponent's some psycho like Arab who doesn't give a fuck? and wants to kill you like what happens when your opponent's 340 pounds of pure muscle and you know don't get me wrong like a lot of the times if it's just like it's a, it's an it's a not a winning situation and you need to know when to fight and when to not like sun tzu says but 
when it comes down to it and you are forced into it and you are forced to fight that guy who wants to kill you, he doesn't give a fuck and he's probably stronger than you, you really need to know that you have the heart and then you've been hit before and you can take the hits and you can give them and you're going to put your all into that fight. And you're either going to make it out or you're not. But chances are, if you've trained that way, if you've trained insane, you know, you've got a way better chance of making it out. But Krav Maga Studios don't train insane, not here in the United States. Eight out of nine, if not more, are just ploys to get your money. You know, to use my uh, very limited Hebrew vocabulary, give me the, show me the money, give me the money, right? Um, it, it's not good. So I recommend that people do other things. And you know, the funny part too is, I was talking with a couple of these Israeli special forces dudes, ex special forces dude. Well, I don't know if they were ex or not. You never really get out of that game, I think. But a couple of these guys, um, and they all did Muay Thai. <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, the Krav Maga is good. He's very good, but we do the Muay Thai." And it was like, "Okay, well then, like, oh, how come every every time I meet one of these very serious operators, they're either a Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu guy?" Like, yeah, they train in other hand-to-hand -hand combat that they've been shown and stuff. But, like, when it comes down to it, what do they personally choose to train on their own time? Muay Thai, MMA, or uh, Jiu-Jitsu, or a mix of all, which is MMA. So whilst you may not get all of the weapons disarming and, you know, tactical tips that you'll get in some of those other systems like Krav, in my opinion, if you didn't have access to us, you know, if you're too, if you're uncertain about us or you you, you don't want to go and travel for a Bill Wolf seminar or a Kelly McCann seminar um, or something more along those lines, uh, you know, and you just want to go and, and and do this thing, go go to MMA and then maybe supplement that with some Krav Maga or whatever. Because, again, it's not a bad system. The techniques will work, but you have to know how to deploy them and employ them in the right way. And that only comes from kind of a long time of actually fighting and you need to fight to learn how to fight you're not going to learn how to fight by doing kicky feet on the pads you know and then turning your back and running away you know what happens when you're all hopped up on adrenaline you do kick the guy in the groin maybe he even falls down and you turn you run into a fall <laughs> yeah I mean, it's 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 honestly it's a it's a legitimate concern right because you get tunnel vision the reptilian brain takes over we all know that scientific bullshit about you know when your adrenaline rushes so it's happened all right. I, I've actually seen it. So you don't want to do that. You want to train the right way. You want to keep your whips about you. And you want to know that you're actually effective, an effective fighting machine. If you want to become an effective fighting machine, we can help you with that. All right. Um, what are you going to learn in like eight hours of training how how to like kill someone with your hands? Yeah, we can teach you that. Um, is it going to be, is it going to make you an effective like fighter to fight someone else who doesn't know how to fight? You know, I mean, in the OSS, they went through probably about eight plus hours of training, six to eight or plus hours of training. This was to show them some basic principles of survival. We will show you that. And then if you want to take that further and become a better fighter, instead of just learning survival techniques, we can help you with that as well. Anyway, guys, I hope this answered your question, Mo. Um, you know, I get this question kind of a lot about Krav. Do I recommend it if you're living in Israel and you're studying it with the IDF and stuff? Sure. But please study something else as well if you're really concerned about it. Or if you're living in the States, be very cautious about your Krav Maga studio that you hang out with. Um, if you're if they're not doing any pressure testing and if they're not doing any like legitimately like scary kind of stuff, probably go find somewhere else. Until next time, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. And I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers, mother flowers.